Hi, this is Dr. Kurt Wohler for the Advanced Organic Acids Test Mastery Course. Title of this short lecture is Advanced Topics in Organic Acids Test Assessment, N-acetylcysteine, B12, and Thiamine Deficiency. So the Advanced Oat Mastery Course is dedicated to understanding each marker on the organic acids test from Great Plains Labs. So we'll go through each marker in depth, clinically correlate the information. In addition, we'll go through each section and how each section of the oat re relates to its other and what that means clinically for your patient. You'll also come away from this course feeling very confident in how to interpret other organic acids tests from other companies. So under the nutritional marker section of the organic acid test is a chemical called N-acetylcysteine, NAC. In most organic acid tests, as you'll see, the level will be normal or on the low end of normal, and that is normal for the test because it means that there is adequate conversion to glutathione. Now, the marker could be elevated from taking N-acetylcysteine supplementation, and that's fairly common if that's the case, but it could also be caused by a conversion problem of NAC to glutathione. So if you see it elevated in somebody who isn't taking NAC supplementation, you have to be concerned that they're not converting NAC to glutathione. And so there's many factors that go into producing glutathione. There is the combination of glutamic acid, cysteine and glycine. And what's interesting is that ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is a chemical produced by the mitochondria that's necessary to make glutathione, but glutathione is the main antioxidant that's important for protecting the glutathione, uh, for protecting the mitochondria. Plus, there can be, there's enzymes in each step where there, there might be genetic variants or polymorphisms that are affecting the enzymes as well. The fatty acid metabolite section is an area of the test that is strongly linked to mitochondrial activity. We get a large percentage of our energy production by burning fat. Now, a couple of markers on the organic acid test in this section are worth noting. Sometimes what you'll see is just an elevation of the first two markers, 3-hydroxybutyric and acetoacetic. When those are elevated by themselves, you're usually looking at somebody who has malabsorption. They've either got maybe candida or bacterial overgrowth. There could be looking at somebody who's diabetic or pre-diabetic. Some type of metabolic sugar, you know, glucose metabolism problem are fairly common. When you see all of the markers elevated in the fatty acid metabolite section, it could be somebody who has an L-carnitine deficiency, or this is a section of the test that's often influenced by diet, so somebody eating a high-fat diet. Under the nutritional marker section is another chemical called methylmalonic. Notice it has an asterisk marker next to it, which means that if methylmalonic is high, you're dealing with a B12 deficiency. Now, there are a number of things that can influence how B12 functions in the body. Cobalamin is the mineral okay, that gets methylated to help support the methylation cycle. That's what becomes methyl B12. But cobalamin can also become adenosylcobalamin. And adenosylcobalamin is the form of B12 that helps to convert something called L-methylmalonyl coenzyme A into succinyl coenzyme A. If there is a deficiency of B12, a deficiency of cobalamin or a deficiency of B12, for example, and we're not able to convert it to adenosylcobalamin, that can cause a blockage in that enzyme, which then leads to an increase of methylmalonic acid. What's interesting is that when we look at the biochemistry, vitamin B12, okay, just you know, as cobalamin, when it's methylated, helps support the methylation cycle, homocysteine to methionine. But the adenosyl cobalamin is what's necessary to convert 
methylmalonic acid into succinyl coenzyme A. So something that blocks this will cause that methylmalonic marker to be high. Now, what is succinyl coenzyme A? Well, it turns out that succinyl coenzyme A is part of the Krebs cycle, which is part of our mitochondria. So a B12 deficiency can affect mitochondrial activity. Another thing that can affect mitochondria is the nutrient thiamine. Under the organic acid test, under the amino acid metabolite section on the last page, are some markers that can relate to thiamine deficiencies. Now, they're not real common, but they're worth noting because when you do see them elevated, even if they're slightly elevated, it can indicate that you may be dealing with somebody who could benefit from thiamine supplementation. Dr. Lonsdale has been a researcher into thiamine deficiencies and magnesium deficiencies as a link to various types of diseases. Thiamine deficiency is well known in a condition called beriberi. This is a severe form of thiamine deficiency. It can lead to heart failure, paralysis, respiratory problems. We can get encephalopathy with thiamine deficiency. What's called paresthesias, abnormal sensations, pins and needles, for example, affect. It can affect mitochondrial activity. It can affect the limbic system for an emotional control and even get auto, uh, autonomic nervous system imbalances, things that influence the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Thiamine is something that can be supplemented for, and it's often not evaluated effectively and can have a significant impact in people with brain and neurological problems, mental health, as well as autism. Now, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler. I've been an integrative and functional medicine physician for over two decades. I've been doing clinical education for Great Plains Laboratory for many years. I do speaking throughout the United States and internationally. I've written many books. I'm a clinical educator as well as a practicing clinician working with individuals with autism, autoimmune, GI problems, and neurological disorders. I'm also the co-founder of Integrative Medicine Academy, which is an online training academy providing courses, what are called mastery courses, in various topics related to integrative and functional medicine. One of the running themes of all of our mastery courses, including this advanced OAT mastery course, is think critically, think clinically. And that's what I mean by that is, what does the test mean to your patient? What are the clinical presentations of your patient? It's not just about supplementing for every high or low on a lab test, but it's how that lab test applies to the clinical situation of your patient. Because everybody can be a little bit different, but the lab profile might have similar markers. And that's what this course is all about at an advanced level. The organic acid test is a fundamental test to learn how to use in practice, and it will completely transform your practice as well as the lives of the people you're working with and trying to help in your practice. It is a fundamental test, but it also provides information that allows us to expand our view into other areas, chemical testing, metal testing, mycotoxin testing. And we discuss all of that in depth in the Advanced Oat Mastery course. For more information about the Advanced Oat Mastery course, you can go to advancedoatmasterycourse.com, or you can email us at advancedoatmasterycourse at gmail.com. You also have access to this complimentary special report book by texting the word OAT on your cell phone, OAT to 66866. Again, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler for the Advanced OAT Mastery Course. Thank you.